We are getting some rain yet again as I record this. Houston, Texas has received rain every day over the past 30 days, except for three days. Quite rainy here in Texas. Let's check out the surface map. There's how things look, and it's worth pointing out that we are at the peak of summer. Chicago is already seeing temperatures falling very gradually as far as normals. They typically reach their peak on July 17th, and those normal temperatures start falling off. In Dallas, we have to wait until August 2nd for that, but St. Louis, July 20th, they're just coming off those peak temperatures and heading into a slow transition into fall. This afternoon on the map, we've got the polar front up there in the northern plains, a bare clinic low in extreme southeastern Saskatchewan with a warm front extending southeast to just south of Minneapolis. And you can see the cooler temperatures, 60s and 70s, up there around the Lake of the Woods and Ontario. And very hot conditions in the northern plains. We've got 92 to 93. Fortunately, no 100s to be found. And we've got this cold front that's just kind of tied up up there in the northwest. It's made it through the Washington deserts. Good to see Portland there at 67 with those northwest winds. And 79 there at Pendleton. However, out ahead of the front, 88 there at Boise and 91 at Winnemucca. So the heat is still going on out there in the Great Basin region. The moisture out in Arizona, the monsoon, 64 degree dew point there at Phoenix. So they've still got some decent conditions there for monsoon storms. 69 there at Nogales and 55 at Las Vegas, which would be above monsoon levels in Arizona. In the eastern U.S., we've got the Spare Clinic system just off the east coast, northwesterly flow working into upstate New York, Pennsylvania, and down the Appalachians with a cold front from Virginia down to around Asheville and around the Birmingham area. And there's this old decaying front. We've got northeasterly flow in Texas, and you can see the thicknesses right there at 576 decameters. This is a thickness minimum, which means a cooler air mass in that region and very likely depressed upper level heights. And that indirectly represents some of the instability in the mid levels through that region, helping to keep these storms going. Here's a quick look off the west coast. You can see a very deep cold air mass. Well, I'm not going to call that severely cold, but 546 decameters, we usually need to get down to 540 for wintry weather. So this is indeed a very cold air mass, and it extends all the way into the Gulf of Alaska and down into Washington. And then further to the west, we've got this wedge of warm air tied up with this frontal system in the Gulf of Alaska. Some very warm temperatures up to the north. Yes, we cover all areas. You don't see this kind of thing on the Weather Channel or CNN. Very cold air up there in the high Arctic around Elamir Island down to Devon Island. And you can see the 32 degree temperatures there, some snow being reported. And this is helping to firm up this thermal gradient in the southern Arctic. And down to the south, you can see much warmer conditions on the Arctic Ocean. 79 there, that looks like around Copper Mine. And then out there at Inuvik, 73. And as we move west towards the north slope, we can get into some of the cooler air and a little occlusion back there near the Chukchi Sea. A quick 30 second check of how things are looking in Europe. Well, high pressure centered across the North Sea into the Benelux region and the British Isles. A lot of times these high pressure areas tend to be very cool, but not this time. This is a rather mild high, and on the Western periphery, temperatures are much above normal. You can see that 81 degree reading right there around Donegal. 
Here's the maximum temperatures we've seen over the past three days, including today. And we see lots of 80s. And these mid-80s up there at Belfast in North Ireland, that's uh, pretty extreme for that region. The record all-time maximum is right around 85, I believe, 85 or 86. So that's coming pretty close. And this may not look like much to those of us in the U.S., but there's not much air conditioning over there, and the homes are very solid and meant to retain heat, which can be a problem, especially when you're trying to fall asleep at night with this kind of weather. The NHC five-day outlook, not really looking for much, very quiet off the West African coast. That's the breeding ground typically for hurricanes. And about the only thing we're watching is this disturbance expected to move into Georgia and Northeast Florida within a few days. And we might see some development there off the coast over the Gulf Stream waters. Here's how we're looking on the National Drought Monitor. Yeah, the western U.S., a lot of problems there. West of the Rockies, as is pretty common. And the North Plains, it looks like they're in a drought also. However, the eastern U.S., from the Great Plains all the way up to the northeast and southeast U.S., looks like we're doing pretty good. The precipitation for 2021 compared to normal. Yeah, it looks like most everybody in the southeastern half of the U.S. getting quite a bit of precip, but you can see up there in the Dakotas running about 50% of normal and of course, a lot of problems out there in the western U.S. So looks like another bad wildfire season. And that's going to be a problem all the way through September. Here's the same thing over the past 14 days. This is a great way to check in on that monsoon in Arizona. Looks like a lot of areas around Tucson, Phoenix, and up in the Kingman and Prescott looking pretty good there. Only a few spots in the southwestern deserts running dry. And in California, around the Salton Sea, yeah, that's looking pretty dry as well. However, the northern Mojave Desert into Nevada and Utah, they've been getting some of that monsoon moisture there quite early. And of course, as you go west out into the San Joaquin Valley, and the northwest looking pretty grim there with no precipitation being reported. So speaking about drought, we can see those wildfires on the satellite animation. That's the Dixie wildfire. I had to double check that twice because we had a Dixie, Idaho fire a couple of weeks ago. So this one's in California. Also, the Beckworth fire, I can't find that, but it's in this area right here. And that's going to be the Tamarack fire around, looks like just southeast of Lake Tahoe. In Oregon, we have the bootleg fire located right there. We've been kind of keeping an eye on that there the past week or so. And up to the east there, a little column of smoke moving up into Idaho. And west of the Cascades, the marine layer, and maybe some air behind the cold front, flowing into the Willamette Valley. The surface analysis does suggest the cold front is moving into that region. However, dew point spreads on the lee side there are pretty high, up near 35 to 40 degrees, so relative humidities are still a problem. And this afternoon, Arizona and the Four Corners area lighting up with thunderstorms, bringing some much needed rains to those western deserts. In Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, getting some of that dry northeasterly flow, but just enough moisture and instability to keep the rain going. Also, parts of the southeast getting rain as well. The west-to-east progression tells us that the subtropical ridge is still down to the south. So we'll take a look at the upper air chart in just a minute to see what's going on. And with that frontal system moving offshore, that's taken the storms with it, starting to clear out at New York and Philadelphia. And in the wake of that front, 
northerly flow with some cold advection, cumulus and stratocumulus coming back in behind it. And you can see a little bit of that lake effect clearing on the south side of the Great Lakes. Taking a quick check of the upper dynamics in Europe, starting to look a little bit more normal. It is a split flow pattern. You can see the southern stream down here and the northern stream well up there near Norway and the Scandinavian countries. In between, ridging across the UK, that's responsible for a lot of the hot weather, very intense subsidence working on that region. But this heat wave will come to a close as we get into the last part of the week. You can see this approaching system from the Bay of Biscay moving into the UK around Saturday and Sunday. So that's going to break up the heat wave all the way. And there it goes, opening up that westerly flow. Yep, there it is into France and Germany. So we're going to get back in a probably kind of a rainy pattern. Now, of course, we did have this area here in Germany in the Benelux countries. They were hard hit by floods last week. And I'm kind of concerned about more problems. So let's see what we're looking at for precip. Here comes that system from the Atlantic. Precip starts developing by Sunday. However, when all said and done, looks like about 10 to 20 millimeters, which is going to be right around half an inch. So that's not too bad. The heaviest rain will be down there in Switzerland and Austria. And we can run the precipitation fields real quick. We're looking for convective complexes and that kind of thing, extensive precip, and just not seeing very much of that. Just looks kind of like a cloudy, dreary pattern. Here in the US, Big Ridge, right over the Four Corners area, but not strong enough to shut down the precip. And this may be very hard to see, but there's actually a trough right in there. That's associated with that height deficit, the lower thicknesses and so on, and helping to produce some of the rainy activity in that region. And I think if we really focused in on that, we would be able to find a vortex. Sometimes when, when we run this, we can see it. Yeah, see there's a bit of rotation right there. It's even carving out a closed low over Waco, San Angelo, Abilene later this evening. So that's going to meander into West Texas, above average precip there all the way into Friday, and a little bit of ridging coming over East Texas of Louisiana that may shut down the precip a little bit. The main belt of westerlies well up to the north, high in between, that kind of marks the subtropical high basically along that axis and then that low pressure region, that low height area, that's just kind of in between and trying to dig underneath that subtropical ridge. So by the weekend, here's how things look. You can see the subtropical high covers this area right here. There's that little low pressure area. So that's gonna kick up the chances for rain in Arizona later in the weekend. And then going into next week, very large high across the central U.S., the high plains. So we're going to look for it to be kind of dry and hot. Places like Denver, Rapid City, Pueblo, Amarillo, it's looking pretty toasty. And then getting into the following weekend, the 31st into the 1st. More of the same subtropical high oriented like that. That's going to be the ridge of warm temperatures and fair weather. And then down to the south, looks like the easterlies starting to get established. So as you go south from that ridge, you'll get into better chances for precip because you're opening up those areas to the easterly waves that are embedded in the flow moving kind of like that. And of course, as we get into late summer, we got to start looking at tropical storms coming up from the southeast. So that's your information-packed 15 minutes. I hope you found it interesting. 
If you have any suggestions how to make it better, feel free to leave a comment or send me a message at surfacedesk at weathergraphics.com. And special thanks to our new supporter, Frank Borgman. Welcome to the show. The Patreon support is very important for this program as my time is kind of limited. I'm having to work on the books and software and find a balance between that and this video. Anyway, we'll see you all once again for Forecast Lab on Friday. Hope you have a great Wednesday night. Take care and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.